If you're considering putting your kids on an allowance, or maybe they already are, then this video is for you. I'm gonna be showing off the automated system that we built for our family to help keep our daughter on point with her daily chores. Now, if you're a parent and you've gone through this struggle, you might be very well aware of the fact that when you try to make your kids more responsible, what you wind up doing is create a ton more work for you as the parent. And you need to now micromanage this entire process. Well, this system completely eliminates the need for that. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's jump on in. Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm the owner of Gap Consulting, where we help business owners get organized and automated in their businesses, allowing them to focus on growth instead of the day-to-day -day grind. In this video, as I said, we're gonna be jumping into my personal stash and we're gonna go through the uh, automated system that we built for helping my daughter keep on top of her chores. But before we go into that, if you're all about learning how to enhance your use with Airtable, I would strongly recommend that you subscribe to this channel as we put out weekly content on that very thing. So that being said, go ahead and jump into my screen here and let's check out what we've built for our family. So again, this is for my uh, teenage daughter who is uh, you know, notoriously awful about doing her chores. So you'll see that we have three different tables built here. We have a chore submission, we have the chore list, and we have the schedule. Now, I'll go into detail on all of these, but first let me explain how the chore setup works in our household. We have what we call a regressive allowance. That means, essentially, that there is a potential earning. In our case, you know, our daughter can earn $50 a month. But every time she misses a chore, that pulls away at her potential earnings. So, in the case where she's 100%, which P.S. never happens, uh, she would earn the full 50. Uh, and then of course in a case where every time that she misses something, there's a monetary amount assigned to every chore that's deducted from her monthly total and therefore, therefore keeping her uh, you know, accountable for all the different things. So with that being said, let's jump into the schedule. So on the schedule, as you might expect, we have seven days of the week. And each day of the week has chores based on the chore list, right? So if I were to jump over there, you'll see that we have chores. And so there are 10 different chores that our daughter is uh, responsible for. Attitude, bed on time, cleaning the litter box, you get the idea. And each of these chores is due on one or more days. Well, I guess all, all of them have more than one occurrence. And so you, we link the chore list to the schedule. And that allows us to do a lot of complex logic and math in the background. And in here, you'll notice that we also have the value of the chore. And this is the amount that I was speaking about that will be removed from her monthly total in the case that she misses it on a day that it's supposed to be done. You'll also see that we have chore rules here. And so this is uh, really allowing us to give her uh, one place where she can go to make sure that she knows all the rules. And so like, for example, emptying the dishwasher, this has to be done by 5 p.m. And if it's not, uh, then she's going to miss out on points for this. So that's, that's the gist of it. Now, the way the system is built is every night she's going to receive an automated text right before bed that says, fill out this link. And the link that she receives is going to be unique for the day of the week. Uh, and then from there, she will click that link and she'll have to select the chores that were due, that she completed out of the chores that were due that day. From there, that information will be put into the chore submission. And so you see here all of the uh, records where she has, well, in this case, this is fake data, but this is where her entries would show up. And from here, we have different views. And the importance of the views, of course, is we're not paying out until we've reviewed her submission to make sure that she, in fact, did the chores that she said that she did. And so there's a view built specifically for parental review. And here's an example of what the data looks like when it comes in for review. So as you see here, this, you know, we capture the date created automatically. And then from there, we can use some logic to tell us what day of the week that was. These are the chores that she selected in this hypothetical situation as having been complete. And so we can compare that to the list of chores that were supposed to be done for that day. And if there was any reason for any additional deduction, we could enter that here. 
and then this is automatically summing the amount that is lost. Now in the case where, let's say she had completed another chore, we would be able to either add a chore, and as we do that, you'll see that the amount lost is updated in real time. Or alternatively, if she claimed to do a chore that she didn't do, we would remove it from the list. Perhaps, let's say she didn't empty the dishwasher. As soon as we remove that, again, you'll see that the amount lost is recalculated. Now, once this meets with parental approval, we go ahead and mark off the X, which then moves that data out of this view and puts it in the next step of the process which is effectively approved submissions. And so if we were to go to the very bottom of approved submissions, we would now see that date that we just approved. And so not an, only when uh, a chore submission has been approved, does it then uh, calculate towards her total. Now, speaking of the total, there is of course a block or two blocks that we've built in order to help track this information for her. So in this case, she can see that she's lost a total of 650 for this month, and that is due to the submission that we just you know, approved. And then she can also check month over month. So in this example, you know, perhaps, and of course, again, this is fake data, but she has missed uh, $32 worth in the month of uh, April. And here currently she's missing the 650 for the month of May. And as the month progresses, you know, potentially more will be knocked off if she misses additional chores. So let's go ahead and take a look at the automation, which of course is kind of what makes this whole thing so incredible. Drilling into Zapier, we have an automation that's going to trigger every night. And so you see that it triggers, and unfortunately Zapier requires that it triggers on the hour. And for uh, our purposes, I want that text to be sent out at 845. So first we set it up to trigger at 8 p.m. And then the next action is a delay for 45 minutes. So thereby getting us to 845. Now at this point, what we do is we find the day of the week. And so inside of here, it's a little bit of date formatting and it's using the actual date uh, that this is run on. So if I were to run this automation right now, of course, the uh, date would be reflective of today's current date. Now from there, we're gonna perform a lookup and the reason for this is we have different forms for every day of the week. And so we need to determine what is the day of the week and then we need to make sure that we send that appropriate form. Makes sense, right? Because the reason for having different forms, of course, is because not the same or different chores are due every day. And so it wouldn't make sense to send one blank form. Instead, every form is specific to that day. And then lastly, what we have is a Twilio connection. And through Twilio, we are able to then send the uh, output from step four, that is the link that we created. And so we send this directly to uh, our daughter's cell phone and she gets a text then. So the end result is a text from uh, our number at 845 that says, hey, here's the link. You gotta fill this out to do your chore or to, to record your chores. And then once a week or twice a week, as parents, we come into the database check off and make sure, and at the end of it, what do you know, we've got an entire solution that we don't have to micromanage, and now she is responsible for managing her own chores. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did and you have some business questions that you'd like to run by us, definitely swing by our website. The link will be in the description, and we offer up time so that we can hop on a call with you. You can book directly there, and we can set something up that works for both of us. What we'll be discussing is building a solution for you that puts all of your data in one place and gives you a nice concise dashboard so that you know what's happening in your business at all times. Additionally, we will work on building custom bespoke automation for you so that you can eliminate the time that you spend on repetitive tasks and save countless hours every week. So if that's of interest, definitely swing by our website and check out the different offers that we have there.